So I first want to start by asking you about today. 26 people, uh, according to several sources, have died, protesters across the country in Syria, killed in demonstrations. Absolutely Why not. is that crackdown continuing <laughs> Absolutely in Syria? not. These are blatant lies. People, I, I have challenged Reuters, the editor-in-chief of Reuters. I told him every day, every day, Rami Nakhleb from Beirut would call uh -huh. Reuters. That he will tell you guys, today 13 persons died. Right. Not a single person died today in Syria except one policeman that was shot. Well, we would love to be able to go check for ourselves, but we can't because we're not given visas to go report from inside Syria. You were given a visa and you did for go, one you know this. in June, Yes, but since we have not been able okay, to go back. many other reporters have been reporting mm -hmm. from inside Syria, and they are foreign reporters. But here is the story. You asked me a question. Mm -hmm. You need to hear the answer. Sure, go ahead. Uh, people, people mm -hmm. give numbers in in in, in a very very uh, uh, unrealistic way. Mm -hmm. Those numbers are never substantiated because this is what suits the Western media here. At least out of the list that was announced by the so-called activists in yeah. Syria, that of the the, the killed people, five hundred at least 500 have come out and said we we read our names in the in the lists of the killed and the fallen we are live and kicking these are blatant lies this is the problem we are facing today yeah. in syria a massive campaign of disinformation and lies okay again i need to ask you if we cannot go in and substantiate these numbers prove them or disprove them in fact how can we who can we believe why won't the government let us in you were invited. Did you report a single story about the atrocities and the massacres committed by the so-called peaceful protesters? I was invited in, in but not allowed to circulate his, inside of Syria. Historically unprecedented yeah. brutality mm -hmm. that is being committed right now in Syria uh, against innocent people, against civilians, against policemen, and against the Syrian military. Never reported. Never. And even when we provide you with evidence, we give you videotapes, we ask you to interview their families right. to substantiate this stories, the Western media that, categorically refuses to I have to, to say that's areas. not true at all. We have reported on the deaths of security forces, and we know that a number of the people who've been killed over the last several months have been security forces, but a large number have also been civilians, demonstrators, pro-democracy activists, and children. Amnesty International is saying more than 120 children were killed. How are they armed terrorists? Many of those children yeah. happen to be families of military men and of mm -hmm. policemen that were brutally murdered. Now, it's not only the murder, it's what happens after the brutal killing. They dismember their bodies. Uh, the, uh, even a family, a family kin of mine, a relation to me, okay, mm -hmm. uh, 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 he was not only shot, but he was divided into three pieces and his core was sent to his wife. Three pieces. Three of my friends were also murdered. But I'm trying to tell you is what's happening today is in Syria is similar to what has happened in Iraq when brutal groups will attack Sunni groups, Sunni mosques and Shiite mosques mm -hmm. so that they will incite civil war in Iraq. So who this are these is, armed gangs that they materialized well all of They are well known. We have yeah. published their names, their photographs. These are the leaders of what you love to call the leaders of Syrian democracy I'd and love freedom. To see this. Uh, uh, yeah. Here are they. The first one is the Islamic Emir of Hamas. Uh -huh. the, the third one is, the, is uh, the, the leader of the freedom and democracy movement in Syria. Ayman al-Zawahiri, uh, the leader of Al-Qaeda, three, three days ago gave a speech in, he, in which he emphasized two things. He was bragging about September 11, and he was asking the Mujahideen of the Islamic world to go and join their Syrian Mujahideen brothers to fight against so the Syrian regime. So you are regime. saying... You are saying that what's happening in Syria is some fundamentalist, Islamist, extremist, armed movement that is trying to destabilize if the If you country. are talking about the armed groups, absolutely. Yeah. If you are talking about peaceful protesters, as of day one, and let me repeat this, and mm -hmm. I will continue repeating this till the Western media reaches a tipping point that it starts understanding this. We do believe that their demands are legitimate and we are addressing their demands in a comprehensive way. Here is my challenge to those guys who are criticizing us. Mm -hmm. Syria is implementing right now, as we speak, unprecedented political reforms. By the time, I, I, I believe by February next year, uh, uh, the, the, the political scene in Syria will be unparalleled across the Arab world. And here is a challenge to the United States of America. Go to your friends that you usually mm -hmm. offer them military protection and you build military bases in their lands and, and ask them 
to follow the good example that we are going to challenge the rest of the Arab world uh, with. One of, you, one of the things you said in a radio interview a few days ago is that not a single demonstration in Syria has started from anywhere other than a mosque. It, now, I was in mean, Syria in June, as yes. you know, and that's not true. It is there were true. demonstrations at Damascus University. It's absolutely untrue. In Aleppo University, no. there were demonstrations. A Sky News team filmed a demonstration in Aleppo that started nowhere near a mosque. It's untrue. Everybody knows. Why would everyone be lying? No, it's, they are not lying. About look, Syria. Look, 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 I don't look, understand. Look. This is the, let, let, us, let us be respectful and reasonable. Okay. Everybody knows, everybody inside Syria and outside Syria, that religious groups have started those demonstrations from mosques. Every Friday, it is the day in which people fear for their lives in Syria. Even the clergymen in Syria are saying, are saying publicly, are condemning the fact that fanatics have changed some of the mosques, not every mosque. Not every mosque in Syria did witness a demonstration. It's, I would say out of the eight, uh, uh, three or four thousand mosques in Syria, 70 or 80 mosques were the epicenter of those demonstrations. Mm -hmm. Now what I want to say is, is the following. If people are really, and this is the overwhelming majority of the Syrian people, are really about political reforms, about a multi-party system, about transparent, free, democratic elections. Mm -hmm. This is the way ahead for Syria. If they are about their, their ideology of extremism and brutality with, with, names with their and names, pictures. Google them. They are all, they are all on, on the web. Listen, they don't hide themselves, by the way. No, and I, will, and I will, but I can tell you about people I've met in person. I mean, I don't need to look at, the, at, at this. I can tell you I've met demonstrators uh, that uh, have protested that are so afraid for their own safety because they say they're wanted by security forces that they're now in hiding. Others who say you can interview me but you need to blur out my face because my friend was taken into custody and look, tortured. Look. So are you saying if that you these are, people are all no, fantasizing no, What I am this? saying is the following. Mm -hmm. If you are in opposition in Syria and you are about political opposition, about opposing every policy of the Syrian government, mm -hmm. you are okay, you are welcome. The new laws in Syria would allow you to form your own political party. The new media law is the most liberal law today in the whole Arab world. Mm -hmm. This is... I, I, I am not denying it. This is new. It was not the case before. But this is the new reality in Syria. We have announced uh, town hall meetings, town hall style meetings across Syria for a national dialogue mm -hmm. that is being attended by the opposition. And the sort of things they are saying is something that has, I have never ever heard before inside Syria. I'm telling you how the reality is changing and how the context is changing. We are having a new election law. And we are having a new uh, mm -hmm. a, 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 a new part. We the new party law has already been issued. Next February we are having a multi-party, democratic, transparent election. Let the representatives of the Syrian people who will be elected, mm -hmm. let them decide what they want for Syria. Not those who hide their faces and tell you stories. They may hide their faces because like Gayath Matar, you heard of his story, a young 26-year-old who was in hiding, who was eventually taken into custody, and then his body was then recovered by his family. Look, I told After you this, been and in I'm repeating it. For a week. Terrible atrocities, unknown in the history of Syria, a very civilized country, have, has, have been committed in the last six months. It, this is similar to what has happened in Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, why on hell would the Syrian security abduct a person, kill him, and then give his body dismembered and, and uh, eviscerated to his family and tell well, them we did it. Human no, rights groups would say that's be to careful. intimidate Those others. Who, Is no, that not absolute, happening Why would we want to intimidate peaceful protesters when we are telling them, we are mm -hmm. telling them, uh, the C new Syrian laws allow for peaceful demonstrations. We, you are allowed to have your political parties. You can express your oppos opposition opinions on Syrian TV or everywhere so you want. So this young man and was you killed? you can go to elections. And you believe we go and kill him? Yeah. So Just you're saying this young man was not killed no. by security forces? This man was killed by groups that want to further tarnish the image of the Syrian government because they believe this is their historically unprecedented mm -hmm. opportunity mm, mm -hmm. to attack the Syrian regime and topple it for reasons that are well known to almost everybody. So you're saying there are no instances in Syria over the last six what? months where activists or democ democracy protesters have been killed by security What forces. I am saying is, 
Syria has appointed a judicial commission, mm -hmm. and they are they are publicized across Syria. Every single family, every single person that has a, a complaint or that has been mistreated or that has lost a dear one should go there. And there is a commitment from President Assad that they these incidents will be fully investigated. However, the question to you is, so you're who saying will, who will yes hold no accountable those criminals who are committing yeah. atrocities across Syria, including killing children and, and women? But are you saying yes or no to the question, have security forces killed demonstrators and activists what in I the am streets saying, What I am saying is very months. clear. The, the government of Syria does not approve of this, and we everyone who has who has uh, wrongfully committed a crime will be held accountable. The challenge is not those guys, because those guys can be brought to court. The mm -hmm. challenge is how can we address those fanatic Islamic groups, the same groups that are, are, are bragging about September 11 and are calling the Mujahideen of the Islamic world to come to Syria. Let me ask you about international reaction to what's happened in Syria. It's been very strong. We've heard from the United States, we've heard from Ban Ki-moon, we've heard from the French, we've heard from the UK, we've heard from the Arab League as well. And the Arab League Secretary General Nabil al Arabi was in Damascus. Now just to quote uh, Ban Ki-moon yesterday, enough is enough. Uh, Arab countries, the killing machine in Syria has to stop. Erdogan, the Syrian, uh, this is the Prime Minister of Turkey, the Syrian oppressors will not be able to stand on their feet. In other words, they won't well, survive. Well, well you, you, you have uh, made a cherry picking uh, 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 no, assortment no, no. of yeah. criticism. I can give you also mm -hmm. comments from friendly countries, mm -hmm. South Africa, Brazil, India, China, Russia, uh, and uh, a large number of friendly countries. But I'm not about one argument against a counter argument. Mm -hmm. Here are Arab leaders who don't have constitutions, who don't have political parties, well, who Prime don't Minister have- Well, Prime Minister Erdogan does. Who don't, let, let, yeah. I will come to Turkey. Right. You start, you, you, you mentioned Arab leaders. Let us discuss sure. Arab leaders okay. who don't have any sort of a political life grandstanding on Syria. And then you have Turkey. Turkey is imposing herself now, rightly or wrongly. This is their choice as the leader of the Islamic world. What they want is to say, we are the, the true heirs of the Ottomans. Here we are defending Hamas and the Islamic movement in Palestine. Mm -hmm. Here we are lambasting the only secular Arab regime, which happens to be the Syrian regime. Mm -hmm. This is their choice. We feel bad about it. We would, this is not what we want from Turkey, but this is their choice. Having said this,